uh, yeah, uh, Mukhtanan did. Yeah, yeah. Was he the only one I heard? Of? No, but I know that that took place with Mukhtananda. Is that, is that what they practice to do? The yeah, that's called the Mahasamadhi. Yeah, yeah. Go out at the dropping dead at the same time, pulling off a samadhi experience. You know, I mean, if you have nothing else to do when you drop dead, you know, go off in a samadhi. Uh, does he get into the practice of being a philosopher? For example, I know the Tibetans, they do work also in dream time to yes. discipline the mind yes. and so forth. Yes. Does, mm -hmm. Is there anything about the practice of uh, becoming a yes. philosopher? Yes. Um, uh, that's the, the Symposium, the Phaedrus, the Republic, the Parmenides. Uh, it's really, Plato is really a work that combines all of those dialogues. Where you can see it much more clearly, apart from this uh, magnificent literary form that he uses, and he uses with such skill and artistry, is Plotinus. Plotinus goes into it much more. See, Plotinus has the same metaphysics as Plato, of course. Right? He has the one or the good, intelligent soul. And his whole writing is to explain that very thing, how to go through the, or what it takes, the disciplines. And uh, uh, book four, he has six. Book four deals with the whole process of the soul. And um, he does much of what Plato does, but he puts in much more details. And he, and also metaphysics. Do I um, have time? No, I have time. Um, in the Platonic tradition, there's a split. There's a major split between um, Plato, Plotinus, and then Iamblichus, who introduces a different stage of thought. And the major difference is precisely on this issue that we're on tonight. See, here's the problem. Let's see if I can give it to you. Let this line represent the stages that the soul goes through until it reaches that point that we were talking about where it experiences the nature of wisdom. Right. To, uh, <clears throat> to make that claim means what is it that the soul is? What's the soul? If the soul can experience that directly in itself, by itself, then what's the difference between the soul and wisdom? For Plato, as we were looking at tonight, there isn't any. In Plotinus, there isn't any. Porphyry wants to come in and say, and then the people that follow Porphyry, including Proclus, Damascus, uh, Cyrenius, uh, um, uh, what's his name, um, Persianus, they want to say that there is a fundamental difference between the soul and wisdom and the intelligible. It's a fundamental difference that uh, you can come as close as you please, but you can't make it. There are limits, you know, they have that, you reach it asymptotically, but you never really get there, because they want to say there's a fundamental difference between the soul's essence and its power and its activity. What we're talking about here is, there is an activity of the soul, right? There's an activity of the soul. This is an activity of the soul. For that to take place, there must be some power that the soul must possess. And if there is a power, sometimes this is called the faculty, by the way, but it's really dunamis, it's power. 
then if it can do that, then you must be able to say something about the nature of the souls, the substance of the soul, or the essence of the soul. And for this to be said means that um, for something and for, for anything at all that can turn upon itself and see its own nature, that very thing can't be a physical thing because only physical things can touch at one point, right? Pretzels can touch at a couple of points, but not every point upon every point can touch. And therefore, if this is a turning about of the soul upon itself, since the soul is a state of wisdom, then that can be done only by something that is not physical, and therefore the nature of the soul must not be physical at all, but must be incorporeal, and if it can do that, this ability to turn upon itself is called, its basic uh, nature or being is usia, or uh, sometimes translated as essence. What does essence mean when used correctly? It means that power in the soul that can turn upon itself to know itself. So uh, there's a split in the Platonic tradition between those who think that the essence of the soul, the essence of the soul, is the same as being. Whereas uh, Iamblichus, as I said before, and others who follow him, um, want to deny that, want to say it just approaches it as close as you please, that kind of stuff, like a epsilon limit in, in mathematics. So that's normal. So would you, would you say that uh, Iamblichus and afterwards has a more developed um, understanding of the soul, or uh, well, just, to, to, it's not uh, that big of a difference. Uh, well, you see, the basic difference is that for people like Iamblichus and Proclus, whenever you make a logical distinction, whenever you make a logical distinction, it parallels an ontological distinction. So that if I can make these distinctions in thought, well, there must be something in the nature of reality that corresponds to them. So whatever I then experience in the realm of thought, then that must be true about the nature of reality. That's taking logical distinctions as a basis for ontological distinctions. Proclus, pardon me, Plotinus, clearly Plotinus is saying, no, no, look here, that's not, no, no, no. <laughs> It's what you encounter in your highest experience that you must use as a basis for making distinctions in ontology. Ontology is a fancy word, by the way, excuse me. Ontology is a fancy word for the study of being, ontos from the Greek, right? So the study of being is ontology. So uh, one person is going with thought, confident that with thought, you make these distinctions, and these distinctions much mirror ontological distinctions in being. Plotinus is saying, well, I'll tell you, I just had a trip and a journey of the soul separating from the body. It's happened often. Let me tell you what I encountered. And then he makes his distinctions in terms of his experience, not in terms of his thought. The, even though they both have experience, they both have thought, there's a priority of one over the other in each thinker. So for Proclus, he's going to make, he's here. Right? He's here. Though they obviously have a great value to experience, but a much greater regard for experiences in Plotinus and Plato rather than, than logical. And that separates them. So, the uh, best thing to do is to uh, make up your mind to read both. <laughs> okay? Thank you for joining me this evening.